onto the BR8 triangle, and this is a modified triangle, and so we're going to go to the book. The only difference is that they've segmented this piece right here into two pieces. So I'm going to function from all this. I've got my pieces laid out, and so this is the, the wide angle of the triangle moving down, and then this is the little bitty tips here. So my assembly is going to be intriguing. I'm going to put these together. My tags are going to go out on each one of these, so I'm going to put, I'm going to base the hypotenuse first and then do the legs of each of these triangles in order to make the tags go out. As for the center section, that gets a little bit more interesting. I'm going to do these in units, so I'm going to put 17 and 18 together and 14 and 15 together. And then I'm going to do, I'm either going to do this 19, um, 10, this kind of a unit. That's what I'm going to do. 10, 14, 15, and 19, and then 22, 17, 18, and 13 as a unit. And then I will make this a unit and attach it to 16. And then this is a unit. So this it'll be, be a matter of working each piece at one time. I'm going to baste and stitch together one piece at a time so I don't lose my markings because once you baste these you lose your markings on them. So then of course the tip is straightforward and as um, assembly these in rows and then attaching it to the upper portion. So I will get started with my basting and my assembly of this widest part of the triangle. So I've assembled the first couple pieces of this top row, so I'm just going to keep adding, and then this is the very end, and that will complete the top band, and I can work onto the body of the triangle. So I've completed this top band, so I'm going to work on assembly of my next section. I'm going to put these two triangles together, and then I'm going to assemble this whole unit here. Then I will be able to attach the square. This is all going to be based on little pairs. So based on the photo here, I'm going to put 25, 24 together and then attach these bits. Eventually I'm going to form this whole center section and then be able to attach these larger triangles before I can attach this to that whole section. So right now I'm going to do these and these. So I've attached these four pieces all together. So I have this on, my, on the front. So then I just got to attach each of these little tiny triangles here on each side. And then I will be ready to move on to the next segment, which is this middle section here. I've attached the little triangles to the outside of this unit, and that completes that unit. Basted this center square and prepped this whole middle section. These outer triangles, I basted the small side first, and then the long side, and then the hypotenuse. On this one, I did this top side first, making sure to find the edges of this point. Then I did the short side, then I did the, the sh both short side, then I did the very long side here, so that I can have these connected. I'm going to connect these together, and these together, and then I can join them to this center square. So I have this unit connected now. I've taken this square and attached it to this center section that I had assembled. And then I made these two one unit and connected it to the center square. When I went to attach this part, because these are obtuse triangles, it's really hard to find the corners. So you want to make sure that um, you know where the paper is because the fabric is so thick there it looks like it's the paper is actually here when it's really here. So just give yourself some forgiveness with this. If you feel like it's off, it doesn't have to stay that way. I had this as a unit, and what I did is this was a unit, and this was a unit, and this was loose. So I had this, and I connected it to this. And then, since I put these together, I then connected it here. So I stitched from here to here, and then I tied off. 
and then I came back up here and made sure that these two pieces aligned with this not interfering it. So the tip of this is right at that seam. And so then I stitched these together and then came back down and finished this seam. This side I did the same way. I already had 14 and 15 assembled and then I attached this from here to here, tied off, started here making sure that 19 was lined up with 14 and then worked my way down this seam and then down and finished it. So now I have this whole unit right here. And what I'm going to do is this section right here, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 9, this is going to be another unit. So I'm going to assemble 11 and 12. I'm going to put these together from this side here. And then I'm going to put 9 on 11 and 12. And then 10 and 13 in that order. So when I baste these, I'm going to baste this last. Make sure that the tags go in away from this triangle. This triangle, I'm going to base this first to make sure the tags go down away from these two. And this, I'm going to base these inside sections last so that the tags go away from this seam. So now it's a matter of getting this unit of five pieces together and then I can attach it to this section. Before I assemble this unit, however, I have this assembled and this assembled. I'm going to attach this together with these two pieces. So I'm going to baste this and I will baste this with this going down first so that I have tags going out. To these two tags will go out and then of course this side will be debasted first and this then will be having the tags go out. And I'm going to baste this one last so that it goes away from all of these. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then one, two, three, basting. And then I'll be able to attach this to this whole side and this, and then I will be able to have all of this together so I don't have to worry about corralling them all together. So now I've attached these two triangles, which is number 23 and 26 on my chart. And just make sure that you don't get them flipped around because they won't end up fitting correctly. So you should have this straight line here and an even angle here. There is a little bit of an off kilter right here, but I think I can work that in when I attach my triangle into the solid sections. So I'm going to put this on the top here before moving on to this next section. Okay, so now I've got the top of that connected, which was 27 through 33. And now I'm going to go back down here and assemble 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 into one unit. Alright, so I've got this unit assembled, which is these five pieces right here. And so then I'm going to stick that in my space right here and then attach, I'll attach these seams these three and that like that. I'll attach it to here. I'll start here make sure that this is lined up and then tie off and then start here make sure this is lined up and then when I get to these sections I'll make sure that those line up correctly too because it's red on white. Once I've done that I will attach um, my number eight piece. So I have attached this unit in place so this is all together at this point. And now my next unit is um, number 8, and I have basted number 8. I did the sides first, and then the top and the bottom, so that the tags are going towards the outside, and it will help, those, those being on the outside will help me attach to these pieces a lot easier. Okay, so at this point, I've got my number 8 piece on, and everything's attached from here up. And now I just have this tip to do, but I still have seven little pieces left to do. So I'm going to assemble five, six, and seven in a row. I'm going to assemble two, three, and four in a row. And then I'm going to base my tip number one. And then I'll be able to, to attach this to this, this to this, and this to this. So for basting, I'm going to baste this first, on the outside first on these outside pieces. And um, on this little tiny triangle, I'm going to base this big side first. So 
so that my tags, whatever you baste first, is where the tags go to. So I'm going to get these tags out of the way here, and I'm going to get these tags out of the way on this side. And then I'll be able to do the same thing here. Now I've got my pieces up here basted. This is 5, 6, and 7. Um, I want to caution you that the tendency, while you're basting these little tiny pieces, the tendency is to baste 2, 3, and 4 at the same time you're basting 5, 6, and 7. Don't do that because it's really easy to get these mixed up. There's a slight difference in size between 5 and 2 and 7 and 4, but not enough to make a huge difference when you look at it when it's basted. So baste these three and then assemble it and then attach it before you baste these. It will make life a lot easier and there won't be any confusion. So I've assembled all three of my five, six, and seven pieces and I started some, uh, attaching it to my triangle and I just wanted to show you the importance of starting at one end, tying off and going back to the other. This end I have already attached and I've attached it to about here I folded my tag over so I can stitch and then I'm going to go back over here and then the first thing I'm going to do is line this up because clearly it's out and that's because of the distance added right here so I do try to take this up by doing a little X so I pull so I pull this this way and then I pull this this way, this, this minimizes this distance. And then I have another one over here. And it can get pretty poochy because of the way the angles are and all that. So obviously we've got quite a bit of additional going on right here. And this is the same theory for all these other triangles and squares. It's just the way English paper piecing works when you have multiple pieces going on to a single piece. So I'm going to line this up and then stitch it. Even if it's not cooperating, I'm going to stitch it where it should cooperate and it will fall into line. Any kind of dimensional shift you get um, once you've attached it will go away once you take the papers out. So force it to go where you want it to go and the end result will be a lot better. Okay, now that I've finished attaching this, I didn't get this completely lined up, but any discrepancies will be, um, I can, when I attach this to the solid scallops triangle in the border, this will be uh, hidden at that time because I can work that little bit in. So I'm going to go back here and baste number two, three, and four, and then assemble that into a row and then attach that here. So I've basted two, three, and four, and I've sewn two and three together, and I wanted to point something else out. As these pieces get smaller, the folding process for the thickness becomes more and more of an issue. So what I've been doing here is you can see that this point goes past this line, um, on, especially on this white background. So the point goes farther down than I would normally want it to go, and then the line here, this line is higher than this line, or lower in this case. This is not lined up exactly. What I did is because this is this is presenting as thicker than this, I centered it because you're looking at the fold differences because there's going to be additional thickness of the fabric here. And this is what matters when you're getting this small. This stuff really does take, take effect and does matter. So when I line up this piece, I'm doing this with this tape. I'll put a piece of scotch tape on here and then I will line it up and I'm going to line this up in the same way as I lined up the other one so that it's centered on that piece. Actually this one looks like it's going to line up better. It's just all and this is why you want to make sure that you baste it as tight as possible without folding the, the paper. So I'm going to line this up and you can see that it's going to have some kind of a bow to it but this will get taken, this will get straightened when I attach the tip piece here because this side is going to go here this side is going to go here. Now I have my two three and four row attached to the rest of my triangle and I have one last step would be to attach my number one point. So I want to make sure that I baste this side last 
so that all the tags are not in this row at all because I've got this conglomeration of tags here. By doing the tags the way I did, they nested very nicely into each other. So I've got these down on these white ones and then the red ones are going up. And so then what I did is they nested right into each other. Now they're small and I had to force it in there, but it is quite a nice little nest thing compared to it fighting each other. So that's why tags can be very beneficial or very harmful based on the way you baste it. So I'm going to go ahead and baste this again with this side going down last so I don't have any tags interfering. And then I'll attach it to this and I'll have a completed triangle. Now that I have my number one tip attached to my main triangle, I now have a completed BR8 triangle.